Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. Oh, it's been hot. I think that uh, I'm seeing some storm clouds and lightning strikes on my 10-day uh, weather app. So hopefully the monsoon starts this week. I am tired. In fact, uh, this week it was just uh, humid without the rain. I mean, if I'm going to have a humidity, at least bring the raindrops. But the gardens are going crazy. Uh, the harvest is on. Oh, my goodness. This is this is why we in spring... We plant the gardens and so, so that we can enjoy the flowers and the vegetables and the fruits of our labor. Um, if you're coming in right now to the garden center and you wanted to start gardening, it would be too late. I do have some herbs, a few, very few vegetables, but uh, in the peak of spring, Waters Garden Center at least, here in, in Prescott, we'll have literally thousands of square feet dedicated to nothing but edibles. Now I'm down to four tables. And so I'll have backup racks everywhere, but now I've got just what you see is what I've got. So you're, you're, you're having things that you can plant now, like lavenders and uh, rosemary and thyme. I think I've got some basil, uh, those types of things. They love the heat. They love the summer. You need things that can take when you plant it now that can take this kind of weather. I've got uh, the cool season crops coming. They're not quite ready. There's a whole set of vegetables and flowers that you can plant that will bloom and, and produce right through winter. At least through the end of the year, you'll get your first snowstorm, you'll, you'll get some frost, and they just go crazy. Some plants love the cold. Some love the heat. You need to be working in sync with those seasons. And right now you're in a gap. Actually, I did just receive our very first crop of pansies. Pansies are a winter or fall and winter kind of, of flower. I'm a little nervous because it's, you know, 90 degrees out. They don't like the heat. But you know what? Pansies are so robust. If you took care of them at all, they would, they would just, they would flush and quadruple in size. These are very large, one-gallon specialty pansies I grow. Just You'll only find them here. And I just look at colors and varieties going, ooh, that looks neat. I want to grow those. And so we grow them in the greenhouses. And when they're ready, we bring them into the garden center. That's kind of how the crop rotations work. And it will only crescendo. It will build through September, first part of October. Uh, as far as edible vegetables, that would be things like cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli, uh, uh, lettuces and kales. There's all this leafy type of uh, Brussels sprouts. Oh my, that sounds good. Um, those things you plant really in the fall, late summer, fall, and you produce, you, you harvest those for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, the new year. I mean, right through winter, they, they just keep producing. So really there's, there's five seasons, the way I describe it here in the mountains of Arizona. This is uniquely mountainous. And so we've, we've had the, the spring season is, is Mother's Day, basically. That's when everyone, the entire community is here. It's crazy. It's nuts. There's no parking. It's just mayhem. It's so much fun. Gardeners are out and they're just buying up stuff, just planting the gardens. We're in the summer season right now. So heat, things seem to like the heat. We're going into fall. Uh, we're still a month out, really, before fall hits. It's, it's September, October, really. Uh, for it, November, some of those things, uh, like uh, uh, ornamental pears, all of your apples and pears, they turn color in November. So it's, it starts in September and goes through November. Then you've got winter, evergreens. That's when they're famous. But really, there's two other cycles that I, I think of as in my garden brain. I've got the early spring season. Usually, it, it starts planting after, th after Valentine's. So somewhere at middle to end of February, the weather turns. That bitter, bone-chilling cold's done. The ground thaws. It's still frosty. We can still see snow, but you can plant the things that like frosty, snowy kind of conditions. Pansies and all that early spring uh, kind of plants. 
Then you get your spring season. There's another season, if, if you're a flower grower, that I consider perennial month. So June. June is unique. What happens is early spring and spring, that is, early spring is like March, April. Spring is May, first part of June. And then summer, that, that June season, if you really like flowers that come back every year, perennials, June is when they all start to bloom. Earlier than that, they're coming up. They're looking good, but they're not in flower. So you can't walk through the, the greenhouses and peruse the tables and touch and feel and smell and the perennial flowers. We'll have annuals. These are plants that just bloom their hearts out. I don't know how they produce so many flowers, but then they, they, they produce, they're so energetic that they burn out come next winter. Or they, they typically are not winter hardy. Those are annuals. Perennials, they'll rest underground and they'll come back fresh every year for you and rebloom. Those are perennials. Everyone wants them earlier and we'll have catmints and gallardias and those early spring bloomers, but really you've got I don't know, 200 varieties in the month of June. June, July, first part of August. And that's that's really that, that perennial, but it starts in June. And I define that as its separate season. If you really like flowers and you like them to come back, June, this, this, right now, June through now is when you really look at them. We're about to transition over to your fall crops. Ah, we've had a few things that the flocks are in, but again, it's not quite ready. So the mums and the asters, the kale, those fall crops that just are, are really glorious. They describe, you know, pumpkins and mums just go together. We're, we're, we're about two, three weeks before that really happens. So the crops are looking good. They're budded up heavily. They're kind of exciting, but they're not quite, we don't want to bring them into the garden center until they're cracking color. We want to show we want to give them to you right as they're breaking uh, buds so you get the most color, longevity out of those. You could plant those uh, in the ground and mums would keep coming back for years. I've got some mums in containers that are ginormous. Quite honestly, the fall crops, they're usually less expensive than the spring crops. Spring crops, the reason they're more expensive, you planted them and you're holding on to them for months. You're watering for months. You're keeping, you're just nurturing these things through winter. Last, and we're plugging things now for spring. Uh, the fall crops, you start those in summer and they just, it's so warm. Things grow so fast that you don't have as much time into them. So, you, so the price is typically a little bit lower. Not a lot, but that's why I encourage folks, mums, don't think of it as perennials. They're annuals. When you get done with them, throw them away. Buy another one next fall. You don't have to you know, buy three colors and plant them all. And by 10 years in, you've got 30 different colors of mums. That might be a bit much. I just use them and then I, I, I use them and then I throw them away. It's just kind of like a poinsettia. It's the same way. So that's kind of the, the, the seasons that we deal with. Right now, there's seasons for bugs. And so I'm, I'm seeing that there are a lot of leafhoppers, huge grasshoppers. Uh, these things aren't really, I mean, they can eat some foliage. They're bad. Really, the real problem with these summer bugs that eat foliage, they spread disease. They'll nibble on one tree over here, you know, three blocks down or, or two houses down or around the corner, and they fly around the neighborhood in the morning, typically. They'll land on your tree. They'll start to eat some of your tree, but that disease they picked up over there, they spread it over here, and so your your aspens can get leaf spot. Terrible right now. Uh, you, you get uh, uh, cherries. Your fruit trees can get le leaf curl. You really don't want these bigger insects of summer in your gardens. And so I went through and I sprayed, I sprayed my, all my plants. I just took multi-purpose insect spray, put it in a hose and sprayer, and I hosed down everything. And the next morning, there were carcasses all over the place. I didn't even see them. I didn't realize it was that bad. I was just doing it as defense going, I don't want leaf disease. That's really hard to deal with. Bugs are easier to deal with, but they're the conduit in which disease spreads itself. And it's through the foliage in their mouth and on their feet. They pick up these spores and it just spreads. So powdery mildew, leaf spot, shot hole. There's a lot of things like this. So really, if you see some bigger bugs, don't go, oh, it's okay, we'll all live in com community together. No, 
you go live in someone else's yard or, or you're dead in my yard. We're going after you because I don't want to gar- I don't want gardening to be that hard. A lot in store for you. We got Lisa Waters Lane coming in right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Trumpeting Vine, and Butterfly Bush. Monarch and Swallowtail Butterflies flock to Waters Butterfly Bush with spectacular 8-inch flowers filling the yard with fragrance and beauty. Heat, drought, wind only make this shrub bloom more. Tough enough to grow in clay, but hardy enough to shine in containers. With so many colors to choose, every yard should have at least two. You'll only find impressive butterfly bush at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Plants are a lot like puppies. They need care, water, and food. You wouldn't forget to feed your puppies, so don't forget to feed your plants. Water's 744 All-Purpose Plant Food is a gourmet meal for your plants. The only food for Arizona plants for the nutrients they need for big blooms, a hefty harvest, and tremendous trees, all naturally. It's time to feed your plants with 744 All-Purpose Plant Food from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we're back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just uh, so welcome to the studio, Lisa. Glad Thank you're you. here. Good so, to be here. Uh, you enjoying the heat? No, no. I yeah. am. No. I love well, you're the a heat. lizard. You're part lizard. I love part the heat. Reptile. <laughs> if I had to come back as anything, it would be probably a, a top predator lizard, not, uh, not lower. Gila monster. Gila would be okay. They're so slow and. Uh, cathartic i don't know they're just a black diamond rattlesnake yeah but then everyone wants, wants to take a shovel to your head all the time <laughs> that's not so good what's what's something inert snakes probably aren't it huh. uh, komodo dragon yeah uh. own the island <laughs> eat small children and goats <laughs> mm, okay. maybe that's not it maybe i'm happy just being me <laughs> you do like the heat i will say uh, i do not some people like the heat and some people you like the cold mm-hmm. you get the windows open in January, because yes. you like the fresh air. It's true. Yeah. So, um, what were you doing in the gardens anyway? You were, <laughs> there's dirt all over the patios. I haven't had a chance oh. to blow it off. You were doing well. Like, there's just like dirt went like exploded, like potting soils everywhere. Because there were some things planted that needed to go, because oh. they were that tomatillo you'd put in my front pot. Yes. It it was so huge you could not back your car. Yeah. Out of the garage. It, it was an experiment. And it wasn't fruiting. No, it, it was so. it's experiment that went like Very Jurassic. <laughs> it just went, uh, yeah, it was bad. So it was too large so for the pot. But you so don't know until you I, try it. I, well, now we know. And I yeah. took care of it. It's gone. Yeah, there we go. I, didn't, I didn't notice that because the potato vine is so huge <laughs> beside it, so which is not as large. Not right. as uh, Drapes down more. Yeah. So yeah. Bushy. Looks better. It does. Did you see the art I changed? So I put the yeah. Tiki Man head with the Society Garlic over to the left side of the raised beds. Yes. I took that big, beautiful piece of art and put it where the Tiki head was yes. underneath the, the uh, willow tree. My question is, where'd you put my weird gargoyle man? Um, he was, he, he started to fall apart on me. Oh, did you throw him away? I did not throw him away. He's hidden back behind the trees back there. I was wondering if you would notice it. I can bring him back <laughs> at any time. I wouldn't dare throw him away until I knew you didn't notice him. Oh, I notice. I notice I, I things wouldn't mind, that happen in the yard. I wouldn't mind being your gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Always getting noticed. <laughs> My pointed little... Nose and ears uh-huh. and claws and we mm. like for a while we sold gargoyles here at the garden center back Victorian yeah. kind of looking stuff very cool it's pretty cool yeah, we got some in the backyard some in yeah. the front just kind of keeping the scaring the boogeyman away <laughs> well garden questions that's what we got this week so uh-huh. any good things give me something I haven't heard before anything how long you been in this business yeah like twenty forever years yeah. it's the same questions every season all oh, the time. <laughs> But every uh, once in a while, we get stumped. We had yeah. a customer bring in a, a sample of a plant that 
you didn't know. I didn't know. My dad didn't know. Yeah, uh, nice. We, we've showed it to like five or six other people and they're like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of fun, you know, to, to research that. But yeah, most of it you've seen and done and heard. Yeah. But Sean, who lives out in Chino, has a peach tree who's pretty much done most of his fruiting or pretty close to it. Wants to know, should he fertilize now or wait until fall? And the second question, can he trim it up now? Very good question. So he's in tune with, with the environment. He's, he's right on track. So when you're done pruning your peaches, plums, cherries, whatever, the pitted fruits especially because you harvest those in the summer, um, go ahead and fertilize now and in the fall. The most important feeding of all plants, especially those that bloom in the spring or fruit, are, are, is the fall feeding. So about Halloween. When you see the fall color, maples are red, the aspens are gold, you know, all that fall color uh, fertilize. It takes that food and that's what it forms next spring's flower buds with. So if you want great lilacs, fer fertilize in the fall. If you want great apple trees, fertilize in the fall. If you want great quince, forsythia, daffodils, whatever, you, you fertilize fruit trees you fertilize in the fall they're hungry because they've used all that food you gave it back in the spring they've used it all up and they're still actively growing and so you you want to fertilize now to help it just reset uh, if you want fall color if you want best fall color out of your your service berries and choke cherries and uh, ornamental plums fruit trees maples you fertilize now you fertilize now for fall color uh, that's in two, three, three months away. Uh, so a season ahead. Now back to the pruning. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of growth, so that he trimmed it up last winter, did a great job, opened it up, had a good harvest. It sounds like picked the peaches. Now he's had all the what we call suckers, so all the new summer growth, the growth since spring. You've got two, three feet of growth. Go ahead and trim that back right now. Not the not the intense pruning that's done in the winter. But all those suckers, you can trim that back, get it back to size, especially your um, uh, semi-dwarf, dwarf varieties. If you don't keep them cut back in the summer, they tend to take over. They tend to get too large. So for things you're trying to keep espaliered or down to size, under eight feet tall, you prune in the summer, the suckers, and in the winter to shape it up and open it up so it doesn't get disease. So yes, do both. Okay. Fertilize now, prune now. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Next question is from Jerry in Prescott Valley. He has a very large old weeping willow that has white oozy stuff coming from the trunk. And he's also seen some dieback on some of the branches. And he wants to know, what is it? What can he do? Jerry, you need to head to the hardware store and buy a brand new chainsaw. You deserve <laughs> it and you're going to need it. So it's called Slime Flux. Slime flux is very notorious on willows, cottonwoods. It really gets its claim to fame on elm, the native, the Chinese or Siberian elms. Uh, it's just oozing of the sap. It's a bacteria. There is no cure. I wish there was. We could bring some of these trees back. But uh, the best thing we can say is, is soak it in bleach water. Sometimes that one part bleach, 10 part water soaking that area but you can never get it soaked enough there's bacteria eating the cambium layer underneath the bark that lower bark and it's just oozing out the tree is trying to flow that out sometimes it can turn brown white clear it just it's it's terrible there's no cure it, it will kill the tree and that's probably the that's i hate to tell you this that's the dieback uh, you could fertilize it now and fertilize it a lot, get it to outgrow some of this and maybe get an extra year or two out of it. If you just if you just can't, your heart just does not allow you to do it. What I would suggest is plant something you like that's not a willow. Don't plant a willow. Put a maple in, put a sycamore, put a, put a birch, put something else uh, that's different. Get it starting to grow because when that maple's gone, you will miss it and it'll just be this gaping hole get something to kind of start. This is a great time to plant another mm -hmm. tree because they're actively growing now, so you can get a more size to it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not gonna recover. Slime flux is what the problem is, and that's also what is killing the plant. Yep, yep. Sometimes you see a lot of bees seem to be real attractive Especially to it. hornets and, and yellow jackets, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's just messy when it gets to that point. And, 
But yeah, sometimes it's hard to let those big trees go, but it's the circle of life, right? New chainsaw. <laughs> It'll be fun, actually. I love <laughs> dropping a big tree. Okay, one more quick question from Gina in Prescott. She has a Brandywine tomato that's been doing beautiful, looks great. A couple days ago, it just kind of shriveled and wilted. She's given it extra water, still not perking back up. Ooh. What's up? Well, I don't know. It's like a duck. My chest hurts. Why? <laughs> uh, well, it could be like a dozen things, but wilting. I mean, number one thing we come up with is it got dry. Irrigation went down, clogged up, something happened, so it didn't get enough water, so it wilted. Mm -hmm. Once a plant wilts, that's why you want to be careful. You never want to buy stressed plants because once they get stressed, it takes them months if they ever come out of that stress. So healthy, active, growing plants. Well, once that tomato stressed, you, you, just because you had water doesn't mean it'll come back. It mm -hmm. could be that. That's 80% that's of all the issues. Or... It could be vertinellum wilt. There's a wilt that comes out in the summer months. And if it's truly, if you've watered it and it's wilty like that and it's not recovering, rip it out of that garden. Pull it right up by the roots. Get it out of there because vertinellum wilt, if it is that wilty, mm -hmm. leafy thing, um, it spreads through a garden and take, it infects all the tomatoes. You really want to get rid of that. And there's no cure. So there's no spray we could give you that would kind of take care of that. So vertinellum wilt, research that. Take a look at it. My guess is water. Water it again, deep soak. See if it comes out of it. If it doesn't, it's not going to come out of it. Get it out of there. All right. Great questions this week, folks. Ken and Lisa Lane, The Mountain Gardeners. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion Plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Butterfly Bush, and Trumpeting Vine. Large clusters of red and orange flowers create a dramatic show all season long with Waters Trumpet Vine. This vigorous vine thrives in heat and blooms profusely with neglect. Quickly covers large areas as a ground cover, spilling over retaining walls, screening a fence, or cloaking arbors. Guaranteed to attract more hummingbirds and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So this is a very good time. If you've not fertilized in, in the summer, you need to. Plants I'm seeing throughout neighborhoods are yellowing. They're getting emaciated. They're turning color too soon. Far, far too soon. They're, they're six weeks before they should turn color. They're stressed out. They're starving to death. If you've not fertilized in the summer, you really need to. Now, I, I was helping a customer here at the garden center here this week. Um, a couple days ago, I'm going, here, here's the, you want to use all-purpose plant food. Yeah, but my wife bought these garden spikes from the Mart box. We won't be specific, but anyway, box store. Uh, wouldn't that do the same thing? I'm going, well, if you read the box, it says put one spike in and fertilize for the year, and it will do that in about a 8 to 12-inch radius around that spike. That's it. It fertilizes. Well, you've got a root structure of a tree that's probably 400 square feet. Roots go out everywhere. Where do I put the spike so the plant can pick it up? It's very inconsistent. I stopped selling spikes here at the garden center many uh, two decades ago just because we weren't seeing the response to the landscapes that we really wanted to. And so you're better off using an organic granular food, not a water-soluble, out in the landscape. This is trees and shrubs and vines, the big growing things. If you've got a small a shade tree or a new fruit tree in the yard, or you've got a, a vine you want it to fill in and cover this fence, 
you need to fertilize. It's not going to grow as well by itself or as thick by itself. If it blooms, plants that bloom, it creates a tremendous amount of energy. It takes energy to create those kind of flowers. So if you want to continue for a wisteria to bloom, you need to fertilize. If you want fruit on your trees, you need to fertilize. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to put fruits and, and flowers onto a plant. And summer, to take advantage of this rain that's coming, it's going to come. Just a matter of when, of course, I've been saying that for four weeks. But it's going to come, I'm telling you. Uh, it, eventually it will come, and it will release that fertilizer. Don't use stakes. They don't work. Don't use miracle Grow. I'm telling you, I won't go on my soapbox. Oh, I might. I don't know. Uh, miracle Grow is a salt-based fertilizer. You don't want to add to our natural hard waters. And water solubles flush to the ground, through the soil too fast, faster than a big plant can take it up. You don't want to use synthetic fertilizers. This is Turf Builders and Scott's and all these things. They're petroleum-based products or chemicals. That's where they get their carbon molecule. You throw it on there and it releases so fast from the first rain or two. It's gone within three, four weeks. It just flushes right through the root zone. And yeah, it's 20, 20, 20, but the plant only picked up 2% of that. You really want an organic where it releases over a very long period of time and just slowly fertilizes this plant. That's the game changer. That's why the organics work so well. They're a bit complicated to work with, but if you go to a great garden center, hi, my name's Ken. I own Waters Garden Center. We make our own fertilizer for here, for our plants. And it's made to release over a long period of time. It's gonna work, it just, it's important. So the spike thing, just don't waste your energy and time and money. Uh, they're, they're cheap. You can get them for under a buck a spike. You, you got to probably put five, ten of them around each tree to really do the, the plant justice if it's a large plant. Maybe a small plant, it might work too strong to use in a, in a container garden. Raised beds, impractical, doesn't work. And so those are my, that's my take on, on fertilizers. While I'm on that, that same vein, I'm having a lot of customers come in and go, my tomatoes aren't blooming. Uh, cucumbers aren't producing. Things aren't blooming. They aren't producing. They're just growing, not producing. Here's what to do. Uh, give them a, this is for vegetables, flowers, things that are smaller rooted. Give them flower power. It's 48% phosphorus. Load them up on phosphorus. That's that middle number, nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. That middle number forces the plant to slow down, lowers the pH a little bit and then forces it to set flowers, phosphorus set flowers. If you've got too much nitrogen, um, um, you've got too much manures, or you give it a 20, 20, 20 all the time, it's got too much nitrogen. It wants to be, these summer plants like to be starved of nitrogen and bumped up in phosphorus. And so if, if those plants aren't producing like you want, aren't blooming the way you want, they just haven't set, your neighbors are, are harvesting like tomatoes like crazy and yours aren't quite there, give it flower power. So again, it's a fertilizer I make here at Waters Garden Center for our plants because I know that plants, they don't, they don't bloom right in the summer. This is something I put together just to force plants to set new flowers. If you bought that hanging basket and it was glorious and it's kind of now it's more green than flowers, it should be covered. You should not see any foliage on an annual uh, hanging basket. Give it flower power and within two weeks, it's just like whoo, covered. Your vincas, uh, petunias, geraniums will be over the top because it's been designed, flower powers designed to bring out flowers and bring out blossoms so that your, your pumpkins will be larger, your, your tomatoes will start flowering and blooming, cucumbers will start going, eggplants, they're another one that's notorious, uh, squash, and all of your flowering things, it really makes a difference. Food. You can go that far down that path, but I think it's relative right now because I'm hearing that on the streets here at Waters Garden Center. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. 
All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. Waters Garden Companion Plants by our maple, verbena, crepe myrtle, and rose of Sharon hibiscus. Rose of Sharon is a mountain hardy hibiscus with an enemy like blooms. Each stem of this hardy hibiscus is packed with buds. She makes a beautiful informal hedge or screen and is easily trained into small trees. Available Prescott colors show in blue, purple, white, red, and pink for years of enjoyment. You'll find breathtaking hibiscus here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes with her garden segment. Just what what is going on? What what are gardens talking to her about what is she doing? What is she hearing? What are you seeing? Just uh, where is your heart in the garden, my dear? <laughs> I set that one up okay? Sure. I'll go with it. I can always go with it. Okay. Good. <laughs> so this week I thought I would talk about um, some great perennials that we have in right now that you can use to refresh your garden. Because, I mean, let's face it. Our gardens are kind of some of our pots, our raised beds, our perennial beds are looking hair tired right now. You know, some some plants just didn't perform the way we wanted to, so we've ripped them out. Some have just gotten old and yucky, and we've all got some few spaces where we could freshen up with some bright new flowers. Some are actually too happy, like yeah? my tomatillo that oh. you ripped out of my <laughs> container so it's it was too big it needed to go so and then it leaves a big gap so it was too large for either side of the driveway we've got uh-huh. big pots and it just took oh you couldn't it just every time the car went by it, it would bump into it um i noticed that pansies you've gotten quite a few trucks in this week uh, yeah. with flowers we did get pansies that must be the in. inspiration for the segment but right. i noticed the new pansies i want one of those it's a bit early for pansies but dang it it's a little we find you a nice shady spot yeah a little shady spot in the yard or container they'd be good bloom yeah. right through winter it's they amazing do. plants so you could yeah. probably take that one gallon thing that's a foot wide turn it into a three foot wide thing that stays in color through the new year mm-hmm. for, Valentine's. Even longer, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they a lot of them go into the first part of summer. So yep. it's actually a really good plant for here. But that's not one of the ones oh, I picked. Okay. Gotcha. That's an <laughs> annual. So, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. I went through the Prudendale house, and we just had some some really pretty things down there. Um, got some great echinaceas in, so coneflower, echinacea. We got Cheyenne Spirit, which is probably one of my favorite because it has the multiple color, kind of orangey, yellows, reds on it. Great plant for here, 24, 30 inches tall. So it gets a little bit bigger size. Then we got a new one in I hadn't seen before. Maybe it's been around. I just didn't know. It's called Kismet Raspberry. Echinacea? Uh-huh. Oh, so let me guess, yeah. pink. It's raspberry? Raspberry. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, nice thing about this one is max height is 18 inches. Oh, that's so nice. So you've got a spot where you want some smaller, not as tall plants. It would certainly fit in there. It has a really big flower. kind of has that real big uh, center yeah. part of it that's huge with the flower, you know, the... Daisy wheel kind of petals yeah. coming off. It's not there a double. Go. That's a single no, flower. It's a single Daisy flower. Daisy wheel's coming off, and it's yeah. pink or watermelon color. Brass, color? Dark raspberry. raspberry. Dark, very, okay. very pretty. Anyways, nice shorter one. Uh, there's another one called... Delicious candy. Ooh, I won't miss some of that. <laughs> I'm like, where do they come up with those names? But uh, that's another one, a little bit shorter too. So great in those pretty old beds. It's kind of a pinkish color. Bright Containers, pink. yeah. Raised beds, that kind of oh, stuff. Perfect, yeah. perfect for that. Then we got some wonderful Coreopsis and tick seed in. We got a Roseanne tick seed, which is kind of a. It'd be great going into fall. It has kind of a bronzy color with yellow yeah. tips on it. It'd be really pretty to mix with chrysanthemums and some of your grasses as we go into fall. It'd be excellent for that. And then we got a solana, which is a really bright yellow. Bright, bright These yellow. These are all echinaceas. No, 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 no. I'm oh. on to Coreopsis and Tixie. Oh, were you God. not I'm listening? Sorry. I was actually thinking we have a, we have a <laughs> hosta that's 
feeding you get you caught me on the the uh, berry or ah, whatever the candy. echinacea yeah the candy ah, I'm going, we, delicious we candy. should put that there that would be really good <laughs> You got me thinking wheels. Uh, okay. My, okay, never mind. No, I moved on. Yeah. You got left in the dust there. So those are Coreopsis or Tick Seed. Just real pretty ones that would, would look nicely going into yeah. fall. And of course, we have um, salvias of all colors. You want a color? We got it. Pinks, reds, whites, purples. We have one called Blue Note, which is a real pretty bluish yeah. periwinkle color. And salvias just, they just do well here. No matter kind of where you put them in the yard, they do excellent. So lots salvia of salvia. Or, or what's it, sage. Sage. Those two names. Whenever you see yeah. salvia or sage, you know you are golden, good to go in the gardens, bright sun, right. animal resistive. In fact, all the ones you've mentioned so far. They are animal resistive. Have proof. Yeah. Rabbit proof. Mm -hmm. uh, that they're good. Definitely. And here's a couple more that are really good. Um, the Agastache. So they've got some new ones in called the Kudos series, Kudos. So there is Kudos Golden and Kudos Golden Dwarf. So these are shorter Agastache, so 17 to 20 inches, and some Agastache, I mean, they get huge. huge yeah. But these much more compact, nicer looking Agastache are, I like the smell of them. Animals do not. So they're very animal resistant, but the hummingbirds love them. Yeah. Um, so really nice sun-loving, heat-loving perennial to put out there in the yard. Comes back every year. So that's a good one. We also have a lot of daylilies in, um, which everybody should have a few daylilies. Yeah. They're just a really nice, easy-growing plant. We got some purple, uh, purple day oros. So purple day oros bloom again and again and again, kind of like the regular orange yeah. Stella yeah, day oro Stella that's been yeah. around forever. Uh, so this one has more of a purple color to it, but just keeps on blooming throughout the season. We also have a Maximilian sunflower. Oh, nice. So this one gets tall. We're talking three, four feet easily tall. It has the nice little yellow sunflower on it, but it is actually a perennial sunflower. So a lot of your sunflowers, you throw the seed out, and they come back from the seed the next year, but not usually that same plant. This one comes back same plant yeah. every year so real pretty there again going into fall Perfect. really nice color out there in the it's yard. the only sunflower that's mm -hmm. perennial i mean truly right. comes back from the same root some from the same plant which if you're planting a, a perennial bed mm -hmm. you want to you want to know it's coming back in this spot not right. reseeding all over the place <laughs> so you can control yeah the the design of mm -hmm. your gardens yeah definitely put it towards the back because yeah. it gets tall <laughs> Uh, we got a mariachi sombrero sneezeweed. <laughs> That's a terrible name. That's what I thought. I'm like, who calls a plant a sneezeweed? A true gardener. <laughs> he doesn't have any marketing skills whatsoever. Doesn't know how to hire or even yeah. talk to marketing folks. Mm, bad, bad, bad. Yeah. But it's another little yellow daisy like to looking flower. A great late summer, early fall color. Very, very pretty. Great to put out there in your yard. And then we also have some great gara. And so there's a, uh, it's called Steffi. I think it's Steffi. It's a real blushy pink one that stays shorter because some of your other gars, like the ones with the white in yeah, them, they get pretty tall. Huge. Yeah, knee high or over mm -hmm. more. Right. So yeah. these guys stay smaller, I think like around 18 inches or so, a little shorter. Real, kind of a real pretty color out there. Some of the leaves have more of a, oh, almost a burgundy edge to them. So a little something different with different color to put out there in the yard. So if you only had to pick one, what would I pick? Which one of those you just men mentioned? You just walked the greenhouses, you saw all the new trucks help unload all the new plants, <laughs> and you went, "Ooh, that's neat." Which one would you put in your garden? I think I'd put the Kismet Raspberry Echinacea in. Really? Yeah. Echinacea can't go wrong. Good for birds. Mm -hmm. Seed production, fabulous color. So snag one. I got a place. I'm going to replace a hosta. Really? We have a hosta? It's, it's on the side. I was trying to, you know, <laughs> hostas like the shade. Yeah. It was on the east side of that. Let's just see how much sun a hosta will really take. Yeah. I can personally, it, you know, testify. They don't take any sun. <laughs> so it looks terrible. It's bringing the gardens down. I got to replace that sucker. Yeah. So. Yeah. We've been doing some, <laughs> redoing the steps on the side of our house. Yeah. And so we had to tear some stuff out to kind of 
anytime you do any kind of construction, you're going right. to lose some stuff. So I think we're going to need more than just one, one echinacea. That'd be, fun. That'd be a good fun garden project with my favorite gal. Ah, hey, would you be my garden girlfriend? <laughs> yes. There'll be uh, extra benefits. But it's so hot. Oh, it's the east side. <laughs> we'll do it in the evening or something after hours. Anyway, great advice. Great stuff. Great perennials. The things mm-hmm. that come back year after year. And there's more annuals that came. Just oh, more yeah. shrub. The we season's are not, not done. done. Oh, not even remotely close. And this is just the summer mix. We're right. starting to, to, to harvest the fall mm-hmm. colored stuff. So maples, just a new set of aspens just came in. Yeah. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's Waters with two T's, GardenCenter.com. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Ouch! Oh man, another rock! Hi, I'm Rusty. You know, the shovel you're destroying trying to dig that hole? Sure, I get it. We got these beautiful plants at Waters Garden Center. Waters asked if they could plant them for you, but no. You had to do it yourself, even though they would plant, deliver, and guarantee your plants for two years. I hope I don't end up like that old pickaxe. Ouch! Prevent yard tool abuse. Waters Garden Center. They plant, deliver, and guarantee. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. Not all flowers are created equal, especially this time of year. Some are just showier. You're walking through. You Some of them are 50 mile an hour color. Right? You're driving down the street, down a major corridor, 50 miles an hour. You look at this thing. You go, whoa, what is that? That's pretty cool. And zoom, you go by. That's 50 mile, mile an hour color. Or, or maybe you're a 35 mile an hour driver, 35 mile an hour color. Then there's some you just walk by. And you the fragrance just fills up that part of the landscape. You go, whoa, I need to take a moment. Some of them are attract butterflies. You just go, wow, look at all the butterflies and hummingbirds. That's just so cool. That's why I love gardening. So th- I thought I would cover some of the flowers that you could plant now that are over the top. And and yes, this is for my California, Phoenix, uh, Palm Springs, Tucson customers. Uh, yes, I know it's summer. I know it's 91 degrees out, but that's not that hot for plants. It's, you're not in, you're not living five miles from the sun anymore. It's not 115. You're up in God's country where it's just beautiful and plants grow fast right now. And so it's so mild. Yes, you can plant. Now you can't plant a tomato plant because there aren't any to be found right now. Uh, you could probably start a seed in a greenhouse, but out in your yard, there's not enough season left, but you can plant these core large bloomers. And there's some that are just famous right now. Uh, uh, Gallardia. Gallardia is a perennial flower. It has a flower on it that can be anywhere from red to orange to yellow. It starts to bloom in April. This is an amazing, amazing perennial. It comes back every year. Javelina, don't eat it. Rabbits, don't bother it. Deer, walk right over it. Just ignore it. This plant is an Arizona wildflower. And so Gallardia is, is a plant that just blooms. It gets about Oh, 18 inches tall, but the flower on it has a daisy wheel flower to it. Uh, I think there's reds and oranges out there right now, uh, but they're the size of about four inches, four inches across, and they're covered. It's amazing, just just covered with flowers. The most popular or the showiest of all of the summer vines this is a hummingbird magnet. It's called trumpet vine. Trumpet vine is kind of like a, a a honeysuckle on steroids grows really fast. Loves the heat, loves summer. It's part of that zero scape 
a low water, low care kind of plant, but we'll plant this to cloak a, an arbor, a trellis, uh, go, go up fences to hide things. This thing spills over retaining walls. We'll use it as a ground cover. Just it'll creep up through the rock piles and just kind of cover, soften everything up. But what it's famous for truly, huge red flowers. The flowers are probably three, four inches long. They're the size of a silver dollar at the end, kind of tubular shaped, and they're typically red. They can be red, orange, or yellow. Basically, it's three, three colors. And the hummingbirds, they cannot resist trumpet vine. My personal favorite, I really like Balboa Sunset Trumpet Vine. Now, I've got three or four varieties. It's just, this just Ken. It's just, we're friends. We're neighbors talking over the back fence, and here's my, my personal favorites, but I sell them all. Yeah, Balboa Sunset's an orange color, orangey red. I like it because it's a new variety. We've grafted a couple different types of trumpet vine together. It's got a hardy rootstock, but the top growth produces more flowers, less beans, and it's not as aggressive. Some of them are so aggressive. They're kind of like grapes or silver lace vine. They just take over. If you stand still long, they just start grabbing onto your leg and crawling up. Balboa Sunset is less aggressive with a showier flower to it. And just peruse them, look at them all, just my personal favorite. The next one, this is probably the most famous of all of them for summer, is Butterfly Bush. Monarchs have, are here, uh, our state, state butterflies, a swallowtail. You've got painted ladies, all kinds of activities going on with Butterfly Bush. Now, your grandparents grew Butterfly Bush that were ginormous. They were too big, too aggressive. We've introduced an entire series of butterfly bush that are much easier to take care of. They get Some of them are even ground covers. They only get 18 inches tall, and they just kind of spread. But with that same big cone-shaped flower, the other common name for butterfly bush is summer lilac. It has a similar type of flower that lilac does, big um, cone-shaped flower that just has multiple florets coming off the end, end, of, end of it, and butterflies do truly, truly, they cannot resist it. If you've got kids, if you've got a back patio, you just like butterflies, you want to go go just admire them, plant a butterfly bush close where you can enjoy that. If you've got a whole series of, of butterfly bush, the same flower, again, different colors. Your, your grandparents grew like purples and blues, and it was kind of it. Now we've got reds and whites and yellows and multicolors, uh, and a lot of them are hip to chest high. So they just, they, they're just they an easy-to-manage type of, of butterfly bush anymore, or budlia. The other one, believe it or not, magnolias will actually grow here at the, I would say, 6,000-foot level and below. So you folks that are tuned in from the White Mountains or Flagstaff, uh, uh, Williams, probably not, but Kingman. Uh, Prescott Valley, Cottonwood, a Payson. Oh, yeah, magnolias do really well. I've got two. I've had them for many years. They put on these huge six, eight inch white flowers that are so fragrant. They're evergreen. So they'll keep that very green, uh, shiny leaf to it. I really like the brown beauty magnolia. That's kind of the one I grow. Uh, it's got the big flower that you, you think of. The, the, Top of the leaf is this bright green, and underneath has this kind of dark leathery look to it, which makes it very efficient in water. Uh, you don't really care for it that much. Put it on the drip system where you, where you feed the maples and the apples and all those other big-rooted things. It will, it will thrive for you. But you can count on these big flowers every late spring through early fall. They're really pretty. One that I like, too, I've, I've got several, several colors. I kind of collect crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtles for you southern folks, you know how famous crepe myrtles are there. They're just, they grow into huge trees. Uh, here, they're more bush-like than they are trees, uh, mainly because the winters can reset, depending on the variety. They'll almost act like a perennial. Uh, they'll go back to the ground, hibernate, come back fresh every year. So I've got three or four of them in the backyard. They're all, uh, one's in full bloom, the next one's about to bloom. I know it depends on the sun they get and the variety. But they love heat. They love sun. They put on these big pinnacles, these big flowers, sets of flowers that cover the plant. They're famous in the summer. Throughout Arizona, I'd say, again, that's one's probably for that 6,000-foot level and below. 
I'm sorry I'm leaving you all. I got one that's good for you all at the higher elevation. But right now, you know, magnolias, crepe myrtles, 6,000 foot and below level. You're to about 3,500, 3,000 foot. You're probably good. So you Skull Valleys, Kirklands, Hillsides, even Baghdad. I think crepe myrtle is, is beautiful when you see it bloom down there. Now, one for all of us. There's a whole series of new roses coming out. Now, roses can be intimidating. They seem to be high care. People have this mythical thing about them. They're disease-ridden. you got to prune them back three nodes at a 45-degree angle to get them to rebloom. Yeah, no, really, these new series called Easy Elegance, we figured out how to have a shrub rose that has that same large, multi-petaled rose that you're, that you're thinking of as a kid. Uh, now it's grown on its own rootstock. So we don't have any special grafts. It self-prunes. So when it's done blooming, automatically resets, counts three notes by itself, and sets a new flower. It, they're just an amazing new series of, of easy care. If, if you're new to gardening, start with carpet roses and easy, elegant roses. They're just so easy to, to grow, and they'll grow no matter how cold it gets. They love the sun. They're just a great plant. And then... Um, Two that I really like. One on my back patio and containers are gardenias. There's actually, my gardenias are in full bloom right now. I like to plant them in containers out on the, on the patios because they're just so fragrant. Everyone's so stunned. Evergreen. They're so robust. Just makes you get a frost-hardy variety. So there's frost-proof gardenia. That's the one I grow. It really works out well. And lastly, I'll leave you with, I wish I could keep going, Gold Dart Nine Bark. Nine Barks are famous in the summer. You'll see them at the garden centers in the summer. They love the sun. The foliage is intense. It's like a hookah or coral bells on steroids. And then it puts on these fragrant uh, flower sets to it. But Nine Barks, folks in the Midwest, you know what that is. Got a lot more, lots of things blooming here at the garden center that you can plant now. Be right back. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Butterfly Bush, and Trumpeting Vine. Large clusters of red and orange flowers create a dramatic show all season long with Waters Trumpet Vine. This vigorous vine thrives in heat and blooms profusely with neglect. Quickly covers large areas as a ground cover, spilling over retaining walls, screening a fence, or cloaking arbors. Guaranteed to attract more hummingbirds and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Wondering why the grass is always greener on the other side? Well, it's probably because your neighbor used the all-purpose fertilizer from Waters Garden Center. Monsoon is right around the corner, and it's the perfect time to feed your plants. Waters All-Purpose Fertilizer is the only organic made especially for Arizona mountain soils. Don't buy a bunch of different fertilizer for your flowers, veggies, trees, or grass. This one does it all. The plants on your side will be happier, healthier, well, greener. Safe, natural, organic. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. This has been a crazy, busy, busy week. We finally launched. We've been in soft launch, get opinions from friends, throw it off to other garden centers at big digital nurseries. Uh, we've, been, we've been finessing this website, this, this shopping cart. We finally launched Waters Digital Garden Center Online. Uh, if we bought the URLs to point to it, we've got uh, the, the inventory you see here at the garden center. You can go peruse and look at and search from your own laptop, phone. Phone's a little clunky yet. That's this technology doesn't carry over quite as much, but it does actually flow. It just, you've got big pictures of flowers, of shrubs, of trees, and a small screen doesn't quite do it justice, whereas a bigger screen, a laptop, uh, even an iPad or something does it better, lays it out better. Uh, but great suggestions. Those those of you that follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, we actually listened and we took all of those suggestions. The team sat around and just said, okay, how do we pull this off? And we've now got more variety, more things showing on the screen. 
the heights, the widths, more descriptions. We're, we're upgrading bigger photos. You said, hey, I wanna, I wanna open this thing up and zoom in. We're getting there. So it's kind of hard to find really HD uh, pictures that doesn't bog down the bandwidth, but it's launched. If you want to take a look at that, I encourage you, please uh, take a look at it. If you, if, you, if you actually see something that needs to be changed or have questions, you can actually hit the contact and reply button. That comes right to my desktop. I am answering these things myself for a bit. Eventually, the volume is going to get large enough. I'm going to have to pass it on to an assistant or VA or something. But for now, while it's in its infancy, just kind of starting to make sure things are handled the way the owner would really want it to be handled. I'm personally taking those. But you take a look at top 10 plants. I bought all the top 10 plants, top 10 fruit trees, top 10 shade trees, top 10 evergreens, top 10 perennials, top 10 annuals, top 10 uh, fruit, just grapes, berries, houseplants. Bought all the top 10 URLs. I can't believe those were not taken, but I got them now, so there you go. And I pointed them towards the garden center. But the main one we're going to use is top 10 plants. Yeah, there's way more than 10 plants, but you got to have something that's easy to remember, right? So .com. Everything's .com. It's not .me, .s. Oh, there's, it's so complicated. There's so many choices. It's crazy. But top10plants.com. Um, I don't think you can ask questions through that. So there, if you've got questions, concerns, uh, we encourage you, bring samples to the garden center. I just had a customer that had plums. Leaves are spotting. We put it under the microscope, and uh, we could see leaf hoppers and aphid. Aphids everywhere. Oh, my gosh. You could not see them with the naked eye, but you put them on a digital you know, electronic microscope with a big screen here at the garden center, it just opens it right up going, whoa. So there we said, oh, you've got serious issues. This is going to be, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait a week when all these eggs hatch. And so we got her some, some plant protector, which is a systemic uh, bug killer because this was a large tree. She couldn't practically shoot this bug killer up into the, into the canopy. So for long term, we, we put plant protector at the base. It'll absorb it, take care of the issues long-term. One application for a year. Short-term, we, we got her an organic spray and a hose and sprayer. Hose down the foliage. It'll knock that thing out like right now. The plant protector will take over and from there and just keep them clean. The buds look so good, I think. She'll lose some, some leaves, but then instantly those buds will break open because she's caring for the plant. And it will look like a, within two weeks it looked like a brand new tree. Uh, we did fertilize it, that kind of stuff. What we've been talking about the entire show. So fertilized, plant protector, sprayed it, aphids, leaf hoppers are gone. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We love talking to friends, fans of the show. Waters Garden Companion plants for August are radio red salvias, butterfly bush, and trumpeting vine. Large clusters of red and orange flowers create a dramatic show all season long with Waters Trumpet Vine. This vigorous vine thrives in heat and blooms profusely with neglect. Quickly covers large areas as a ground cover, spilling over retaining walls, screening a fence, or cloaking arbors. Guaranteed to attract more hummingbirds and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.